हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक टू विधि विज्ञान दिस इज पार्ट फोर ऑफ यूनिट टेन यू जी सी नेट जे आर एफ फॉरेंसिक साइंस इन दिस पार्ट वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ स्पीशीज ऑफ ओरिजिन सेक्स एज स्टेचर एंड इंडिविजुअल आइडेंटिफिकेशन थ्रू स्केलेटल रिमेन्स नाउ द डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ स्पीशीज ऑफ ओरिजिन सो इट इज डन बाय कंपेरेटिव एनाटमी कंपेरिंग द एनाटोमा एनाटोमिकल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ species microscopic examination and precipitin test in precipitin test we use anti human serum to identify uh, the species i have covered this part in detail in unit 3 so you can first learn from that now about the skeleton skeleton is uh, divided into two axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton axial skeleton is further divided into skull vertebrae and sternum in appendicular we have upper limbs and lower limbs axial skeleton skull consists of cranium and mandible vertebral column or spinal cord consists of 33 vertebrae Uh, these are divided as cervical seven, thoracic twelve, lumbar five, sacral five, coccygeal or caudal four. Cervical one is known as atlas and cervical two is known as axis. And in sternum, sternum consists of twelve ribs. We all know there are two types of ribs: true ribs that are seven and false ribs that are five. False ribs are those that are not directly connected to the sternum. Now about the appendicular skeleton, uh, upper limbs, we have two shoulder girdle bones, two humerus, two radius, two ulna, and two hands, hand bones. In shoulder girdle we have two types of bones, clavicle and scapula. in hand we have uh, three types of bones carpus metacarpus and phalanges we have eight carpus which are divided into four proximal one scaphoid lunate triquatorial uh, and pisiform the distal one are also four, four trapezium trapezoid capitate and hemate so we have four proximal and four distal carpus bones then metacarpus we have five phalanges we have 14 each thumb two and each finger three three bones about the lower limb we have pelvic girdle innominate bones femur patella tibia fibula and foot bones foot bones are further divided into tarsus metatarsus and phalanges proximal ones are talus and calcaneus medial are navicular distal are medial cuneiform intermediate cuneiform lateral cuneiform and cuboid we have five metatarsus and phalanges are same as uh, that of the upper limb that are each big toe two and each toe three now the uh, bones of the skeleton system this collar bone is clavicle this triangular shaped scapula hand bone humerus then there are radius and ulna then this is hip bone pelvic girdle then these are carpal bones metacarpal bones and phalanges these are the bones of the hand then there is femur patella tibia and fibula femur is the longest bone then uh, tarsals metatarsals and phalanges of foot now the ossification of bone or center of ossification the beginning and the ossification age so there are various questions based on this so you have to study this part Uh, ta- in tarsals calcaneum uh, it begins at 5th month of intrauterine life and fuses at 5 years inside the womb intrauterine inside the womb and then fuses at 5 years 
टेल इज सेवन मंथ्स ऑफ इंट्राइटराइन लाइफ क्यूबॉइड नाइन्थ मंथ ऑफ इंट्राइटराइन लाइफ देन मेटाटार्सल्स बिगन्स एट नाइन वीक्स ऑफ इंट्राइटराइन लाइफ फैलेंजेस एट थ्री टू बिटवीन थ्री टू टेन मंथ्स एंड दे डेवलप फ्रॉम प्रॉक्सिमल टू डिस्टल लेटरल क्यूनिफॉर्म फर्स्ट ईयर मीडियल क्यूनिफॉर्म थर्ड ईयर इंटरमीडिएट क्यूनिफॉर्म एंड नेवैक्यूलर फोर्थ ईयर नेवैक्यूलर मेटाटार्सल्स एंड फैलेंजेस ऑल दीज ऊसीफाई बाय थर्ड ईयर नाउ वी हैव कार्पस कैपिटेट begins at 1 to 3 months and fuses at 1 year 2 months hamitate begins at 2 to 4 months and fuses at 1 year 3 4 months triquetral uh, triquetral 2 to 3 years fusing age lunate 2 to 4 scaphoid 4 to 6 trapezium 4 to 6 trapezoid 4 to 6 and fusiform 8 to 12 years so these were the hand and the foot bones the other bones zippy sternum ossification appears at third year postnatal and it completely ossifies at 40 to 45 years manubrium uh, ossification appears at fifth month of intrauterine life and ossifies at 60 to 70 years rami of pubis unite at 7 to 8 years lateral epicondyle of humerus unites at 13 to 14 years iliac crest 16 years sacral vertebral unit by 23 years hyoid bone ossifies from six centers ossification in greater cornu begins at 10 lunar month of intrauterine life and in lesser cornu it begins at 16 to 22 years and it completely uh, fuses by 50 years scapula uh, have three bones coracoid it appears at one year ossification appears at one year and fuses at 15 year so uh, subcuracoid ossification appear at 16 and fuses at 17 acromion appears at 16 and fuses at 20 patella or patella in uh, males it is 2 to 6 years and in females it is 2 to 4 years epiphyseal ossification center radius upper and uh, upper end it appears at 5 to 6 years and ossified at 15 to 17 years radius lower end appears at 1 to 2 years and ossified at 17 to 19 years so from this beginning of ossification and its completion we can also estimate the age by uh, these by using these bones long bones the uh, bone is divided into three parts epiphysis metaphysis and diaphysis so the shaft part the long tube like shaft part it is known as diaphysis and the ends at the ends of these uh, this diaphysis there is metaphysis and the top and bottom part is the epiphysis ossification in long bones takes place earlier in females and it helps in age estimation uh, as the epiphysal unions in most of the bones is couple, completed by 18 years The radiological study of skeletal remains is based on the fusion of of epiphysis to distinguish the male femur from the female femur there are certain characteristics so the caput column uh, diaphysal angle in males is 125 degrees popliteal length in male is uh, more than 145 mm bicondylar width is uh, more than 78 mm so these are the diagrams for humerus and uh, femur right humerus and right femur so starting with humerus this is the anatomical neck of humerus then greater tubercle this is the head lesser tubercle surgical neck 
detroit tuberosity interior length this this uh, line then medial border lateral margin radial fossa coronoid fossa the two depths then lateral epicondyle head of capitulus trochlea medial epicondyle and here we have uh, the this is the ventral view and this is the dorsal view so this is the posterior surface medial border detroit tuberosity this that this is you can see the little hump then lateral margin lateral epicondyle medial epicondyle olecranian fossa and trochlea so this is about humerus now about femur we have the head the neck lesser tubercle greater trochanter trochanteric inna trochanteric crust spiral inna glucial tuberosity nutrient foramen medial surface lateral surface linea aspera lateral supracondyle line medial supracondylar line then lateral condyle patella surface patellar surface lateral epicondyle medial condyle medial epicondyle adductor tubercle and there is intercondylar notch so the main things to uh, remember is the linea aspera trochanteric ulna nutrient foramen and in head we have anatomic anatomical neck detroid tuberosity olecranian fossa and there is intercondylar notch now to the humerus two bones are attached that are radius and ulna and from femur also two bones are attached that are tibia and fibula so first we will learn about radius and ulna this is the radius and this is the ulna we have fovea capital the head the neck the radial tuberosity nutrient foramen introsis crust volar surface medial surface styloid process articular surface of carpals from where the carpals get attached then we have incisora uh, ulnaris radiale and styloid process so this is the ventral and this is the dorsal view of radius main things are uh, fovea capital radial tuberosity nutrient foramen styloid process then we have ulna olecranon articular surface of olecranon from which it gets attached then carinoid process radial notch of ulna here the ulnar tuberosity nutrient foramen introsis crust volar surface volar margin styloid process so this is where the radius get attached to the ulna and this is the hook type of uh, thing uh, from where ulna is attached to the humerus in the dorsal view we have olecranon dorsal surface supplanetal crust intrasis uh, crest capitulum and styloid process now the tibia and the fibula so we have here intercondylar eminence lateral condyle medial condyle tibial tuberosity 
anterior crest, medial surface, lateral surface, entrocaceous crest, incisura fibularis and medial malleus in the ventral view. In the dorsal view we have the same things medial malleus, incisura fibula, uh, fibularis, the posterior surface, the entrocaceous crust, nutrient foramen, popliteal line, Articular surface of for fibula from where the fibula gets attached to the tibia. Lateral condyle surface, uh, supro, uh, superior articular surface lateral. Intercondylar eminence and uh, superior articular surface for medullus and then medial condyle. So this is tibia and then fibula, the apex of the head articular surface of head head lateral surface anterior crust medial surface entrocaceous crust lateral malleus in the dorsal view we have medial crust posterior surface lateral crest malleus malleolus articular surface of malleolus now the indications of contemporary skeletal remains contemporary mean, um, means belonging to the same time so the skeletal remains would be uh, uh, would appear yellowish white in color and the bone surface will be smooth and the indications of non contemporary skeletal remains very old ones the brown colored bones incisors filled to a point grainy or pitted texture now how to differentiate between human and non-human bones so precipitin test is there and uh, chemical analysis of bone ash thank you for watching like share and subscribe my youtube channel for more such videos in the next part we will cover uh, sex determination from bones.